Just blame it. Well, it's you know it's what you expect with Rich. I mean, it's just bound to happen. So we just it's good preparation for game day. So. <laughs> You kind of worked your way back in the run game where you want to be at this point of the season, heading heading into the postseason to kind of balance your offense the way you need. Uh, I would definitely say we've taken steps uh, of of late. I think just like anything, you know, we we, we went through some up and downs, and I mean, you had different you know different lineups, um, you know, injuries to the running backs. So, yeah, I, I feel really good about the way we ran it last week, and. Um, and and obviously, you know, moving forward, it's it's a, it's a big part of what we do. So, yeah, I'm I'm very confident in our run game. And, and we've asked you before just about uh, Elliot and, and, and working through his issues. Um, you could have chosen to, to sit him for a game or two, but what does it say about him that he wants to be out there? And what sort of a bond and, and connection does that build beyond the run game? Just him taking that attitude and approach to his teammates. Well, I, I think it just shows you uh, who, who Zeke is. I mean, not only as a player, but as a person. Um, you, you look at just the way he's ingrained in the locker room. Um, yeah, he he was not going to miss a game. That's just you know, that's just the way he's wired, uh, and he does so much more for us than just run the football. And, and, I, and we've we've always recognized that. Um, you know, f- football comes very natural to him. You know, he's played a lot of football, and I, I think you know, uh, and he's carried the ball a lot in his career, and that's something I'm cognizant about that he doesn't want to hear about, and, and I and I respect that, and I appreciate that in him. So, uh, I think the way you know Zeke and, and Britt and just through the rehab, the way they handled uh, the injury, uh, just staying after it. You know, I think we're definitely on the back end of it. And you know, and I, and I admire you know, I, I admire him for how he's played through you know, played through the injury for so many weeks. A quick COVID update. Any updates? Anybody added? Anybody coming back? Like Jordan Lewis. Uh, Jordan Lewis has a chance to get back today. That that, that hasn't uh, you know, there's a there's a workout component. There's an evaluation uh, that has to happen for you know for him to come in. We had we had the virtual meetings uh, this morning, so they. Have concluded here at ten fifteen, so I'll, I'll know more of that. I'll have Richard get that to you. Um, I'll have it texted to you because obviously the audio in here doesn't work worth it. You know, it doesn't work. But um, so we'll get that to you right for practice. Okay. Uh, also, how much did Tyron do yesterday, and then what is his prospect for the Yeah, Tyron looked good. He did. He took. He took the full slate of reps that he was assigned. So, uh, but, you know, we have a full full practice today. You know, yesterday was. You know, more of a you know just you know mental day you know for us uh, more in a jog through uh, tempo. So we'll be full tempo today. We'll be working in shells. So uh, and Tyron's scheduled to take the you know a full a full full dose of reps today. Mike, I know we've talked to you multiple times this week about tempo, but when talking to your players yesterday, I think CD was saying tempo is safe haven of the offense. Dalton said. Uh, tempo is our friend. How do y'all balance how comfortable your players are and how much they want it versus the various other elements of the game? Well, I think it's like anything in the game of football. You know, you, you have a if you have a veteran quarterback that can play 100 mile an hour, it's 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 the most important part of his is can all 14 or 15 of those guys that are going to be playing each week, or if it's 16 or you know, 17, ever how many guys you use on offense, uh, particularly each week. So it's just really having everybody uh, to be able to play in the same rhythm and timing, and you know, with the cadence, utilization, and all those things. So I mean, that's why we practice so much. Uh, so that's why it, it differs maybe week to week, uh, depending on maybe who's in there or, or what the other team does. And so I mean, it's just like anything; it's a it's a game plan decision. Uh, the volume of it, uh, but it's it's definitely not only great to use on game day, but it, to me, it's it's the best way to train because I think like anything, you know, when you're trying to develop, you know, you know, anticipation, awareness within the thought process of playing the game. Obviously, operating in a, in a high volume of speed as, as much as you can, I, I think it definitely enhances uh, the opportunity for our players to perform in that environment as much as possible. Absolutely. And on a related note, how key is defensive depth if you're going to go up tempo on your offense, just knowing that you have the defense that will be able to keep up through the game if they're back on the field? Uh, I mean, you know, definitely. I mean, it definitely helps. But you know, most important thing in, in tempo offense is you got to convert to first downs, or it's you know, it's meaningless. So, uh, you know, tempo is is. Is, is something you want to be in offensively. And, and then obviously the defense is obviously focused on getting off on those third downs. So, I mean, it's just like any 
you know, because we break it down just based on standard huddle, you know, fastball huddle, no huddle. So we have different, we have different uh, forms of it that we operate in. But at the end of the day, you, you have to get the conversions because you know, because that's when it, it gives you a chance for the offense to tilt the field a little bit towards the defense. Mike, what can you get from last year's game against these guys? Oh, I think the biggest thing is look the, the personnel matchups. You know, obviously there's a, a lot of dis, you know, both teams have changed a bit. Uh, since last year, you know, obviously it was it was not a good day for us, and um, you know, and that's been noted. But I, I think really, you know, playing them this late in the year um, is is something that uh, you're not paying a whole lot of attention to it. You know, I mean, you, there's some things that they have done schematically versus certain personnels and certain formations that you that are part of the breakdown. But I, I think clearly, you know, the way they're playing this year and the way we're playing this year. You know, there's not a whole lot that goes into that outside of the personnel evaluations in, in regards to the matchups. And then with Trayvon in 11 picks, it's the first guy in 40 years to have that many in a season. Why is that? I mean, is so much the balls throw your team to throw on it so much more now than it did years ago? Why do you think it's taken this long for a guy to get 11 interceptions? Uh, great question. Um, I think you know. Number one, you got to give Trayvon a tremendous amount of, of, of credit and, and just appreciate what he brings to the table as a as a football player. And you know, just in his second year, and you know, just clearly the understanding of the NFL game. You know, I think the biggest thing there is his availability this year from last year. You know, he's he's done a great job in the con conditioning component of it, and you know, he's been healthy uh, throughout the whole year. So because uh, you know, he's just that special type of player. He just needs, you know, if he, he has the opportunities, he's going to cash in on it. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think with the increased numbers in the passing game, it, that's, a, that's a great question. So maybe it's the efficiency of the offenses. Um, you know, I think maybe the rules have, may, may play into that a little bit too, but no, that's, a, that's an excellent question. We were talking about the run game earlier. Um, your offensive line has had a lot of changes. How difficult has it been just to get comfortable on a, on a regular basis? Because you talk about continuity with that group. I'm sorry, Kelvin. Did you say offensive line or defensive line? Yeah, offensive line. Offensive yeah. line. Oh, absolutely. I think the statistics. Uh, just over the fact of you know uh, consecutive starts in your offensive line, you know it's, you know it speaks volumes about it. So obviously we've had a tremendous you know amount of change uh, throughout our offensive line. So uh, it, and I'm hopeful that we're. We're, you know, we could hit our stride right here and stay in the rhythm because I, I think the way we're playing right now is definitely the way we we like to play, and uh, just the ability to use the sixth, seventh, you know, eighth lineman also on game day, I think, is real beneficial for us. How do you try to ignore some of the struggles of Arizona and just like focus on this is what they do every week? This is their package offensively and defensively. How do we avoid their, their struggles? Or yeah, like because they've been struggling a little bit of late. We lost three in a row, and all that kind of thing. How do you just try to ignore that and just look at what they do scheme wise? Yeah, I think you identify it. Obviously, they're, they're they're coming in there as a as a hot team. You know, meaning that they you know the, their urgency is going to be high, uh, based off of you know not only what's going on in the last couple of games, but really their season. I mean, we all understand. What position they're in, we understand the position we're in, and and frankly, you know, as, as we move through today, you know, my, my focus, uh, primary focus, is always on us. You know, I, I think, you know, as you go through these couple days, um, you know, coming off of Monday, and we've we've had success here the last couple of weeks. You know, my primary focus is really, you know, is, is our team handling the success because when they, when guys don't handle the success, the, the details, the little things kind of fall off to the wayside. So that's really where my primary focus is, and and our guys need to stay on that too because uh, this is a group. It's it's a, it's an outstanding football team. Uh, they got a ton of productivity. Uh, if you just look at the production comparables between us and them. This this is a very, very balanced football game as far as uh, you know where the field could be tilted at. I mean, you're talking about a team that has excellent balance, offense, defense, and special teams. They have the veteran special team presence. Uh, that's always a challenge. So, I mean, it, this is this is going to be a playoff type game. I mean, um, we you know we both need this game, and um, I think you'll see that Sunday afternoon. You mentioned before the four interception game or practice that. Trayvon had last summer back, as you said, back in the final day of training camp. At that point, do you feel like you already had a good feel for who Trayvon 
is as a player or did that day at all move the needle in terms of this is who Trey Lyons is can be? Oh, I think it definitely moved the needle, but I mean, you could see his skill level right away. I mean, he's obviously had great tape um, during the evaluation process, you know, obviously very well coached at the University of Alabama, but you know, his ball skills were, were something that I know personally that, that, that I was enamored with uh, because that to me, that's a primary focus of mine in evaluation of defensive backs. You know, it, it, you know obviously, you know, to play the position, there's a skill set that, you know, they have to have to, to play out there, on the, out there on the edge, out there on the corner. But, you know, the ability to, to catch the football as good as the other guy is something that we were, we were really focused on. And he was exactly what we were looking for. And, and you know, and that's why we stepped up there to get, to, you know, to draft him, you know, after we picked CD. So um, the evaluation process was 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 on the mark, and, and he's he's delivered and then some. So, yeah, you, you could see his skill right away. You know, he's a bigger corner. Um, so he just plays with great, great confidence, uh, especially for a young guy that was, you know, evident from day one. Um, so, you know, it was, nothing was too big for him. So, and I, I just think you see a guy that's hit his stride and is, is, is obviously having a special season. Do you remember, um, I'm not to test your memory too much, but periods of practice, some of those picks occur, or anything else just about that day and what the field was like inside Ford Center when the guys having a practice like that? Are you talking about the, the, the four interception day? Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, you know, I, I remember, you know, being, you know, it was a, you know, a very disjointed training camp. I'm, you know, I think that, you know, obviously we were we were scrambling a bit to try to get, you know, as much in as we possibly could. So, um, you know, and then you have your competitive periods that are really, you know, the highlight for 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 me in particular as as as, as, as the head coach in, in year one because you're you know I think those are definitely the times you learn the most about your players prior to the competition you know the live competition and um, you know just to see a young guy I mean it's just like you know, like I told the whole team that day I called him up and had him break down the team I've never seen a rookie in all my years have a practice like that and particularly in the two you know biggest competitive periods of the day so. I think it was definitely a prelude to what was ahead, and uh, and that's uh, I hope he hope he keeps going because he's he's a special player. When people talk about the linebacker position for you guys, it's often about Micah. What have you thought though of what you've got so far this year from Keanu Neal and and Lake Vanderish? Oh, I think they both have, have done an excellent job. I, you know, the ability to get in and out of the different personnel packages weekly. I mean, their command and, and just the little things that they do outside of that. But uh, you know, I think our overall speed at linebacker is something that we we, we felt like we needed to address. And and, and I think those guys have have definitely delivered in you know in that aspect of it. So uh, just I uh, lo- love the combination that those guys give us. And then uh, going over back to Tyron, it sounds like he's trending in the right direction. But what did you think of uh, having rotating back and forth with Ty Nasecki and Terrence Steele, how they did uh, the last couple of weeks? I liked it. I thought it worked out well. Uh, I thought it was good for you know both those guys because I mean, there's you know obviously you're doing whatever you need to do to win the game, but you know there is a long you know a long vision that goes into these types of decisions too. And I think it you know uh, with Terrence spending so much time on the right side, you know throughout his rookie season and, and training camp, and you know Ty has taken the majority of those reps over there in training camp on the left side. So I think it was just you know it was, it was the right way to go. Um, just trusting the training of both those guys and. You know, and once again, uh, I hope we are, you know, lining up with the same five all the way, all the way to the end. It'd be great, but I will say this: we're definitely prepared if we have to make an adjustment because of the, the number of reps the other guys have been given. We'll go to Matt. Uh, Mike, Micah Parsons has said making this jump from college to the NFL and playing the NFL is easy. Uh, do you really believe that, or is that just naivete on his part, or is, he, is this just really that easy for him? Oh, I think uh, when I when I hear those words, I think it's just a reflection of his confidence uh, of of you know the type of type of season that uh, he's part of. You know, I, I don't think it's anything, and you know, it's not on the other side of the fence of disrespect to, to to the players in this league. It's not that at all. I mean, I think if you have a chance to be around Micah, I mean, he's a he's a young man with a lot of excitement. Obviously, super talented, and uh, he's having a lot of fun. But you know, I think like anything in this league, the first time you go through it, particularly when you have this this amount of success, 
um, you know, there is a humility component to it, and, 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 and he has that. So I think it's just just really, a, I think it would go down, in my view, as a statement of confidence. And, uh, you know, sometimes people take statements of confidence and turn them into guarantees. Not that you guys would ever do that, but, I mean, it, 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 has, ha it that has happened. So I just think he's shown his confidence. Uh, last thing I want to ask about him. I saw in his his forty time in the combine was faster than C D Lamb. I know he uh, Coach Quinn has moved him around a lot. Is there are there other positions could you see him potentially play other positions an athlete that good even on the offensive side of the ball? Or you asking me? You asking him? Because I mean, he wants to play offense. He wants to return kicks. He wants to return punts. <laughs> so, and I don't think anybody doubts that he could do that. I mean, he is that talented. So, uh, yeah, I, I think we're you know the other part of it too is. You know the big picture of things. I mean, we, you know, moving him around is important uh, from a number of uh, focal points. Is the fact that he not only is a targeting issue, you know, because he doesn't just line up at the right side or left side you know, as far as the end position, but he's also playing off the ball, can pressure from you know all four locations. So that's important. And, and in fact, the matter too is because of the disruption that he does cause, you know, he creates more one on ones for the other guys. So I, I think the fact that we are moving him around is a real asset for us. Hey, Mike, I was just curious. You hear a lot about giving your offense or defense as good of a look as possible of what they're going to see in the game. When you play a quarterback with a skill set like Kyler Murray's, how much of a challenge is that, or, or can you even replicate that in a practice setting? I mean, it's a huge challenge, and, and, on, and, and Dan and our guys do a great job of scripting it out. I think it's you'll see a quarterback by concept mindset you know where Ben DiNucci will do some things Cooper may do a couple things you know but then if you need to bring in CJ Goodwin you know or said you know Cedric has done some of that some of those things for us so you know we're fortunate to have you know four former quarterback types you know that that, that can go back here and, and and give us the look that we need so uh, we just kind of handle it you know based on what you know the script of the period Mike, in your experience, do you find it more difficult for teams to handle success, like winning or losing? And how do you go about teaching them to handle success? Or what are some of the ways you emphasize that? Well, I think, to, you know, my experience, uh, and I think it speaks to, you know, who the, who these men are. Um, you know, you talk about an NFL uh, football player, what they've endured and what they've overcome to, 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 to even, you know, compete and play at this level. They've obviously come through a tremendous amount of adversity in their lives, uh, both personally and professionally. And I have found that, you know, you know, with that failure is sometimes, I hate the word easier, failure would probably, failure is, is, is easier in my experience to handle than success because, you know, success gives you a chance to take a, take a deep breath and it, but it needs to stop there, you know, and I, and I think we're, because when you, when, when, you do have success. Obviously, you're dealing with more. There's more attention. Um, so, and you know, just there's just other challenges that come out of that. So, I think the education and really the you know staying on top of it. I mean, it's 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 something that's talked about day one. You know, the biggest challenge that we're going to have here in Dallas is handling the success of what we're what, what we're going to accomplish. I believe that. Uh, it's been my experience. Um, so, it, and it shows up in the details. You know, it shows up in the walkthroughs. It shows up in, you know, how you practice. And you know, and then you're just not quite as sharp, um, you know, on game days. So it, it's it's a constant message with with our guys, and and we need to do a good job of it. You know, especially you know we we learned a hard lesson. You know, after six wins, you know, we got punched in the mouth, you know, by Denver, and and uh, so you know we we've had our. Our handling success moment this year, and, and it's important for us not to to have another one. So, and, and that's a message this week. And you know, we have a great opponent coming in here. I mean, this is this is an, this is an accomplished football team based on what, what they've done this year. So, we, we need to make sure we're totally dialed in. We don't need to be changing on how we prepare, and just because of the the recognition or the other things that come with you know with the the, the success that we had. Because this is not the success you know we're looking for. We have we have much bigger goals in mind. And we have a commitment to go much further. So uh, handling success is a constant, constant message and a focus for us. And we'll finish up with Michael Gelkin. Dan Quinn told us how rejuvenated you get self this season, just getting away from yeah. you know, head coach, administrative tasks, structured practice, coaching coaches, and all that sort. 
and just getting back to having a room and, and being more direct with the guys. You, you seem like you've kind of, I'm sure maybe it's a process, but really embrace the practicing structure, kind of having a longitudinal view about taking care of players' bodies over the course of the season. I was just curious how you've kind of come to embrace that and, and do you view that as your primary job as just to embrace that as your primary job as a coach is less about the conventional what we think of coaching but more of the big picture type stuff well you know the old saying you know jimmy johnson you know it's less about the x and o's it's more about the jimmy and joe's and i, I think the thing about it is i mean to just give you a direct answer to your question it, it, it's just my job i mean it's my responsibility i think the um you know, the responsibility of leadership and administration um, that's upon us now in this COVID challenge that we're in is higher than, you know, prior seasons as a head coach. Um, Dan and I talk about coordinating all the time. I'm, um, I don't want to say I'm envy. I, I, I'm excited to see him coordinate again because, frankly, that is the that is the um, most fun, most competitive, most challenging job um, on the coaching staff. So, and I think Dan and Kellen and, 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 and Bones. I think we're fortunate to have three outstanding coordinators. Um, but yeah, it's it's been you know just knowing Dan for a long time from afar and and the respect that I have for him. So and you know the opportunity to bring him in here. Uh, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun since day one, you know, and it's been it's been great to watch this whole thing come together, and um, you know, and, and it's been obviously a huge part of our success. So, uh, yeah, he's he's having a blast, and uh, I am so thankful and for, you know, we're fortunate that he's here. Thank you. Is that it? All right, thank you.